Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back to Value Speaks. I hope you all are having a great holiday season so far and we thought that in anticipation of the new year that we would switch it up a bit. And so I'm glad to introduce a new member to the VS team. We'll both be creating some awesome content about stocks and personal finance for you. And so let me pass the mic to him. Hey everyone, I'll start off by giving a quick introduction about myself. I graduated about a year ago and got my master's in accounting and wrote the common final examination to become a CP in Canada. Now all that's left for me to get fully designated is PERT, which I'ma be honest is such an annoying and tedious process. Now let's get started with the video. So today's video is going to be about a well-known but not very popular stock which is a potential long-term buy and hold. Before we begin, I want to reiterate that I'm not a seasoned investor or a financial advisor and before you do any investing, you should do your own due diligence. This video will be going over some potential reasons as to why or why not Intel could be a long-term play. If you like the information provided, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis and financial literacy videos, and also don't forget to write a comment about the stocks or topics you would like to see on our future videos. So let's get started. The stock we'll be looking at today is none other than Intel with the ticker symbol INTC trading on the Nasdaq stock exchange. So Intel's main business is to design and manufacture chips. Wait, no, not those chips. Those are the wrong chips. Yes, those are the chips which Intel designs and manufactures, the ones which provide the processing power for most of the world's computers. Intel's headquarters is located in Santa Clara, California, and it's the largest chip maker, having around 75% of the world's market share for PC processors. If you're watching this video on a Windows PC or laptop, there's a high likelihood it contains an Intel processor. Intel is a large cap stock with a market capitalization of $208 billion and as of December 24, 2021, it had a share price of $51.31 US dollars, which is down from its 52 week high of $68.49 US dollars. That's around a 27 to 28% decrease from its 52 week high. The main question is why this happened. Even though Intel beat its quarter 3 earnings estimate, the stock still took a nosedive to $47.89 after the announcement and has since increased a bit. The main reason for the fall is that Intel missed its revenue growth estimates and Intel warned investors that its gross margin and free cash flow would decline to a lower level over the next 2 or 3 years. This decline is because Intel will be focused on research and development and building new foundries so that it can catch up to its competitors. Investors were hoping for a quick fix to the issues Intel has been facing such as lack of innovation and falling behind competitors, but Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger is more focused on long term opportunities. So what went wrong? Essentially, Intel is falling behind AMD in terms of processor architecture as AMD's top of the line processors beat Intel's in terms of both performance and efficiency. In addition to this, Intel is also struggling to manufacture 7 nanometer chips in its foundries while Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company or TSMC are already producing 5 nanometer chips and plan to roll out 3 nanometer chips in the near future. Due to this, retail customers and data centers are flocking to AMD for processors and foundry customers are going to TSMC and Samsung for chip production. We saw this in late 2020 when Apple decided to drop Intel and instead start using their own chips for their laptops. And these chips are manufactured by TSMC since Intel was unable to produce these chips and was unable to provide the processing power Apple wanted. Now many of you may be wondering, if Intel is falling behind, why invest in Intel? Well for one, Intel is now cheap. Currently, the P-E ratio of Intel stands at 9.96 with a solid dividend yield of 2.71%. This is compared to AMD's P-E ratio of 45.24 and TSMC's P-E ratio of 27.33. Of course, this is not an apples to apples comparison as AMD and TSMC are currently ahead of Intel in terms of technology, but it shows Intel's potential if they are able to deliver on their future plans. Another reason to invest in Intel is that their future plans aim to retake the crown as a leader in the CPU industry, break into the GPU industry, and take on TSMC and Samsung in the chip manufacturing industry. Starting off with Intel's plans to once again become a leader of the CPU industry. Intel plans to do this by investing heavily into developing new CPU architecture that will provide a substantial performance boost compared to the current lineup and allow them to rival AMD. The first step in this is the release of their Alder Lake CPUs which have allowed Intel to gain a slight edge in terms of performance compared to AMD's Ryzen CPUs. However, it should be noted that the Ryzen CPUs are still more energy efficient compared to Intel's Alder Lake CPUs which make them a better product for most uses. But the release of Intel Alder Lake could be similar to AMD's first launch of Ryzen which allowed AMD to grow into what it is today compared to 3-5 to five years ago. 
Intel's plans also include the entrance into the discrete GPU market with the release of its code named Alchemist GPUs in the first quarter of 2022. The discrete GPU market is currently dominated by Nvidia, with AMD being the second biggest player and Intel having essentially zero market share. The biggest things going for Intel in their entrance to the GPU market is that there is currently so much demand for GPUs that both Nvidia and AMD are unable to meet it. And this can be seen by the insane scalper pricing you see on Nvidia's RTX 30 series graphics card, which I have to say are really awesome graphics cards. This means that Intel will be able to swoop in and meet the needs of the customers. In addition, Intel plans on using TSMC's 6 nanometer process to produce its graphics cards, meaning it will be on the same footing as AMD and Nvidia who currently use a 7 nanometer process from TSMC and 8 nanometer process from Samsung to produce their graphics cards. If the leaks are to be believed, then Intel's Alchemist GPUs should be able to compete against Nvidia's RTX 3070 and AMD's Radeon RX 6700 XT, which are both fairly powerful graphics cards, although still not top of the line. If Intel is able to deliver on their performance claims and rumors, and are able to price their GPUs right, they will be able to take over the mid-range GPU market, which has a lot of demand from gamers, data centers, and sadly crypto miners. Finally, Intel has laid out an ambitious roadmap to catch up to and surpass TSMC and Samsung in the chip manufacturing industry by 2025. The main plan is to build a series of chip fabrication plants in the US, Europe, Israel and other locations which will cost billions of dollars and around 3-5 to five years to build. Intel has already begun this journey by investing $7 billion on a fabrication plant in Malaysia as well as spending $20 billion on expanding existing facilities. In addition, Intel is actively looking for expansion in the European market where it expects to spend as much as $95 billion over the next few years. Jesus Christ! Through these investments, Intel will be able to produce their own chips as well as chips for third-party customers such as Apple, Nvidia, and AMD. Yes, you heard that right. Intel has said that they are willing to produce chips for Nvidia and AMD even though they are direct competitors in the CPU and now GPU space. Next, let's go over some recent news. Intel has been in the news recently with its plans to take Mobileye public, which is a company that Intel acquired in 2017 for around $15 billion. Mobileye is one of the leaders of self-driving technology and more likely than not, your car probably uses one or more features that Mobileye has developed and these features include lane departure warning, forward collision warning, headway monitoring, and the like. This move will greatly improve Mobileye's valuation as it is currently valued at 3 times price to sales and when it goes public, it is expected to trade at 35 times price to sales. This is because Mobileye is currently valued as Intel. When the IPO occurs, it will be valued as a standalone company in the automated driving industry, which we all know trade at much higher multiples. Ahem, <laughs> Tesla. Intel will still hold a majority stake in Mobileye, so they will greatly benefit from this move. This will provide Intel with the required cash flow to fund its other projects and increase their market capitalization. When this move was announced, Intel's stock rose to 52.52 and has since fallen back down to 51.31. In addition to this, Intel has also seen a number of insiders purchasing Intel stock which indicates that the stock is currently undervalued and insiders think that the stock will grow at a faster rate than the average market rate. Now, moving on to the analyst ratings and valuation. Looking at the analyst ratings, we can see that 7 analysts have a sell rating, 12 have a hold rating, and only 4 have a buy rating. What we can get from this is that the ratings are all over the place as analysts are uncertain whether Intel will be able to meet its goals, but more are on the negative side as can be seen by the greater number of sell ratings than buy ratings. However, from the valuation chart, we can see that Intel is trading at a discount to its fair value. In my opinion, Intel is a fairly safe stock with a low downside as a semiconductor shortage is forecasted to continue for the next few years, meaning that the demand for CPUs and GPUs will continue to be high and in the long term, if Intel can deliver on its goals then it could definitely have a large upside. To conclude, Intel's stock has been stagnant for the past few years due to bad management and a failure to innovate. However, Intel's new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, is trying to steer Intel in the right direction by investing in Intel's future. If Intel is able to make good on its promises, the stock would definitely grow at a much faster rate than the market. It has the potential to be a next success story similar to that of Microsoft which stagnated for years due to poor management and a failure to innovate until it was turned around by the appointment of a new CEO. However, before investing, it is important to note that Intel has some stiff competition. 
AMD and Nvidia are already making moves such as releasing mid-range graphics cards and potentially reducing prices to undercut Intel's new releases. In addition, Intel is currently behind in terms of technology, but the potential for a turnaround is a likely possibility. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to leave a like and comment for your thoughts and any other stocks you want us to talk about. We hope we were able to speak some value and until next time, peace.